praying for protection. When we worship God, we should sincerely ask Him to protect us from all evil influences. Here's Gene to explain. Here in two Psalms, David is writing, Psalm 140 and Psalm 141, put these together to get this principle. David is asking God to protect him from all evil people, from all people who would harm him. And we see that immediately here in verses 1 to 3. I've called this protection from evil men. And there were lots of evil men in David's day, just as there are evil men and women in today's world. Here's what David prayed, Rescue me, Lord, from evil men. Keep me safe from violent men who plan evil in their hearts. Can you think of any violent men today? They stir up wars all day long. They make their tongues as sharp as a snake's bite. Viper's venom is under their lips. And as you think about that, think of the violent men today. I just started making a list uh, all the way from drug lords who are in it only one for one reason. That's to become rich. They don't care if they destroy people, whether children or youth. That's violence. That's evil. And it's all around us in our world today. I think of the pornographers who absolutely don't care if they destroy people. They destroy marriages. If they create addicts. They don't care as long as they make money. I think of elements of the music industry with lyrics that are foul, that are enticing our young people and leading them astray. I think of terrorists who literally destroy people in ways that I can't even describe it because it's heartbreaking. It's evil. You see, evil has been around a long time. And they existed in David's day. They've existed ever since sin entered the world, beginning with the first murder when Cain took the life of his brother Abel. Violence, evil. And so David is praying for protection. But in terms of application to our lives and to his life, notice that he also was praying uh, protection from evil influences. Lord, set up a guard for my mouth. Keep watch at the door of my lips. In other words, don't let me be influenced by evil people, people who don't care. Do not let my heart turn to any evil thing or perform wicked acts with men who commit sins. Do not let me feast on their delicacies, which would be to them their lusts, the lusts of the flesh, the pleasures of sin. Don't let me be entrapped by that kind of evil. Delicacies, what a word to describe evil. I remember hearing about a young man. In fact, I actually saw a video of a young man who decided to become a terrorist in destroying people. And he said, this is just like Disneyland. It's like Disneyland. How evil can you become to take pleasure and call this a delicacy to destroy people? But this shouldn't surprise us because it's been around a very long time. In fact, when Paul wrote the book of Romans, he literally quoted from verse 3 uh, here in this particular psalm. Romans 3.13, their throat is an open grave. Now, to get the context, Paul in chapter 1 had talked about the way, and pe way people deteriorate to the place where God gives them over to evil. And in chapter 2, he talks about the Jews who didn't do exactly what they did, but they enjoyed being a part of it, looking on, cheering on. 
taking pleasure in it. And then he comes to chapter 3. And he says, these evil people that engage in that kind of behavior, their throat is an open grave. And here he goes back and quotes this psalm of David. It's really a paraphrase. They deceive with their tongues. Viper's venom is under their lips. Now that's a description of the ultimate in human degradation. And David was living in the middle of it. And we're seeing it even to this day. And we will see it at any moment in history. One of the reasons that many of us have been protected from this kind of evil is because of the Hebrew Christian ethic, which has been the foundation of our society, which unfortunately is deteriorating. And that's very sad. But that's a reality because it really demonstrates that no matter who we are, all humanity will gravitate towards evil. We will gravitate in that direction because of the impact of sin. And apart from Jesus Christ, <laughs> there's no hope. And that's why He came into this world. And even those who, of us who have received the gift of eternal life, we must continue to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. And I love the Lord's Prayer, and I know that there's application here beyond the immediate, probably on into God's kingdom on earth when Jesus rules and reigns. But it's relevant to us today. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And notice this. Here's the key that relates back to the Psalm of David. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now there's good news. And Paul gives us that good news when he says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humanity. In other words, this is a part of life. But here's the good news. God is faithful, and He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with a temptation, He will also provide a way of escape so that you are able to bear it. Paul is writing, of course, to believers, to those who have received Jesus Christ. And in Christ, we can have victory over the temptations that come our way because of our faith in Christ and to draw on His power to enable us to rise above the evil that surrounds us and to walk in the will of God. Here's a question. It relates to the Lord's Prayer. In what creative ways can we use the Lord's Prayer in both personal and corporate worship? Well, I love to use it... Uh, I love to use it at funerals of believers, and particularly at the gravesite. After we've read passages about our hope in Christ, and then to have everyone join in the Lord's Prayer before we lay that body, which will return to dust, in that grave. And I found that to be a very meaningful experience for people, just to simply say the Lord's Prayer, reminding us of who God is.